G'day GDL peoples. After about 40 years, Graphisoft has finally given us an updated GDL editor. This is great. It has line numbers now. So as of this recording, February 2024, it's been out for a few months now, so let's have a look. This is not going to be a how-to on the GDL editor. It's just going to compare side by side the changes that have come about between 26 and 27. I haven't used it really, so this will be an exploration for me as well. So I've opened 26 and 27 side by side, so we can easily see the differences. Open the help under help, documentation, GD or reference guide. This is in Archicad 26. That will give you the PDF version. Let's see 27, help documentation it's not there anymore why not because it's now under online resources gdl reference guide which will take you to the pdf version in your internet browser not my preferred way of browsing a pdf because a browser is not as powerful as your pdf editor which means that i now need to download and keep my own version not an improvement so in both windows i've got the Edit GDL Library Parts Toolbar turned on. And mostly it's the same. The only difference is, is in 27 we now have this Library Developer button on our toolbar, which has all of these fascinating commands, which the general GDL user is not going to use. I've never used them. Now these commands, even though it hasn't been available on the toolbar previously, it was available, but it was in a turned off menu that you actually had to add to your work environment so these aren't new commands but they're now on the toolbar which is good apart from that we've got our library manager reload libraries create container extract a container all the same we've got new library part open open subtypes save selection as share and these are all grayed out they'll be grayed out until i create a new object so let's create a new object new object new object and now we've got the remainder of these are active so we can see that the find and replace is slightly different that will become apparent as we delve further we don't have the increase indent and decrease indent buttons anymore still got the check script session report and open debugger but we've got this new one here which is rebuild and regenerate i'll cover the find and select differences a little bit more later on so let's have a look at our buttons now. They all look the same. Doesn't look like there's any change there. Details is the same. Parameters looks the same. But when we get to the scripts, master scripts, that's when we start to notice some differences. It's a bit hard because I don't actually have any script open. I'll open a nice object later on. We've got a line number here. We've got a highlight. We've got different buttons up here too. So we've got check script that's the same commands that's a new one i'll have a look at that in a minute comment line and uncomment they're the same what's this one open object that's interesting i don't know why they have that there when it's up here as well and it's available from the file anyway that's all good and we've got this dark light mode we can change it to dark which is good that's a good start hopefully that means they're going to roll it out to the rest of the interface excellent Interface script would be the first one that's different. Ah, look at that. Preview. So the same buttons. Set as defaults now at the end and hierarchical pages. So they're the same buttons, just looking nicer and slightly different spot. How about we open the object we did in the last video, our prism with holes. Close our untitled. I'll go to the 3D script right so straight away you can see a few differences can't you we've got automatic formatting for our commands so all of the gdl commands are highlighted we've got line numbers straight away that makes things a lot easier we have collapsible arrows here down the side and they operate on indents so i can collapse this for loop or that for loop and if I click on a variable I've created, 
it highlights them all. That's pretty neat. Grays out my comments. And we've got a mini map on the side here, which is really handy for your bigger scripts, being able to navigate down through your script nice and easily. Let's open the other one we did with an interface. Here's my mini map on the side, and we can see the length of my script here and the portion that we're viewing. That's fantastic. You can see the formatting, so it's a lot easier to understand what you're looking at on the screen instead of all just black. We've got lines indicating what belongs to what, just a, an additional visual feedback. And if I click on that, see down the side here, it's highlighted where these occur. So these are pretty exciting changes. Brings it in line with all the other script editors that are out there. And it's a very welcome change to something that's so fundamental to creating custom stuff for ARCHICAD. We have a look at the view windows. They don't appear to be any different. Doesn't appear to be any difference down here. So the changes are to the scripting windows. And that's fine. That's good. Now, one of the things that's also received an update is the find and replace command. With the old dialog, you could go find and replace under the edit menu, also under your toolbar, which would bring up a rudimentary find and replace dialog. In this one, when you click on find, you get this little subtle pop-up window here. Got a drop-down menu to make it find and replace or just a find. So let's find something. Let's go UI. <laughs> so it's already responding over here, telling us what it's found. UI X Max. There we go, it's found it there. And it's given us live feedback one of three. And I can scroll through those. UI Max, UI Max, UI Max. On the previous one, UI X Max. I'd find, and then if I wanted to find again, I could use the buttons up here. Find again, I could use Control G, as you can see in the shortcut there. Or I could bring up the dialog again and go find, find again. So that's excellent. That's a great advancement. And we've got the other options here, entire word, case sensitive search backwards. And on this, in ARCHICAD 27, we've got match case match whole word and use regular expression I'm not sure what that means i'll have to research that and it looks like you can limit it to the selection as well, well that's good under the replace we've got preserve the case replace or replace all which is replace and replace all so that's a nice nice little update there to the find and select We've also got this commands menu here, which brings up all of these commands available to you in this editor. Duplicate, selection, find, so along with their shortcuts. So these are not GDL commands, these are editor commands. Fold all, that's an interesting one. There you go, it collapses all of my indents. Control K, okay. So if I go Control K, interesting. It doesn't work. Unfold all. Maybe it's Control J. No. So the shortcut doesn't seem to work. Control K. Don't know why. Maybe that's a glitch. Maybe I'm not understanding it. Unfold all. What else have we got? Well, these are nice ones. Oh, that's nice. Transform to lowercase, snake case, title case, uppercase. What does that mean? <laughs> well, lowercase you understand. Uppercase you understand. Snake case, they don't have camel case in here. That's interesting. But snake case is a way of formatting your variables. You've also got camel case and Pascal case. But I don't use Pascal case. Let's have a look. So if I go variable name... You would have seen something pop up on the screen. We'll talk about that in a minute. Select it. Go transform to snake case. 
nothing. Now, it doesn't recognize it because it's not smart enough to know what different names are. But if I put in a capital here, right again, it transforms it to snake case, which is how we name our parameters. So that's an interesting little command there. So I'd encourage you to have a look through these. I don't know them all. I'm just discovering them now. Pretty neat. So we don't have indent anymore. So we've got increase and decrease indent. And I would suggest that that is because... How do I select line? Right, so I select a line left of the line numbers. If I select it in here, nothing here. Meh. It's a bit hard. Over here, select the whole line. If I hit tab, it indents it. If I hit shift tab, decrease indent. Okay, that's more in keeping with other editors out there. I will just put in a few commands in a new object, just so we can get the flavor of how this works. As usual, I'll copy in some starter code. Right away, we can see that the comments are formatted, grayed out. My end statement, which is a GDL statement command, is highlighted. Let's put in a parameter here. Call it prism BM for a building material. And under 3D, let's go, let's go building material. So it's got the options available to me, predictive text of these code snippets. Building material, building material expression. Cool. I can click on that and it brings it in. Or I can hit enter. So let's go back to this. I can choose it with the up and down arrows, which ones I want and then hit enter and it brings it in and my expression will be prism bm so you'll notice it's lowercase that is the style guide preference to put all commands in lowercase i had previously used uppercase because that's how it's in the reference guide and it helped me because there was no formatting to understand what was a command and what was a variable now that it's formatted for us no problem and then we've got put enter Put expression one, expression two. So this could be useful. It could be a pain. Not sure. Time will tell. But it's an improvement one way or the other. Go for. So it's plonked in the code, ready for me to go. Do we need all that code? Not for this one. So I maybe employ a different workflow if I don't want all of that code. That's cool. Very handy. <laughs> And you can see it's selected the, the variable for the loop iterator. If I type I now, it's changed both at the same time. So that's pretty handy. And then we've got prism. Here's our different prism commands. Prism, and it gives you the syntax off to the right here. That's very handy. If I change my selection, don't click on the selection because it will insert it into your code. Just use the up and down arrows and it will show you the syntax off to the right here. That's going to be very helpful. What about in 2D scripts? We had poly 2B. Don't know why it didn't bring the syntax up off to the right. I'll have to figure that out. But very helpful. Very, very helpful. And you can see that when you first place it, it's got all of the different inputs highlighted so if i start typing and fill out that and i hit tab it'll take me to the next one highlight it frame fill one plus two plus four tab to the next one tab to the next one and so on so i'll stop there you can see that there's lots been changed in this new editor it's going to be good using this new editor from now on. I encourage you to jump in, have a bit of an explore yourself, go script some GDL.